generally the, they'll say meet at this place like come for an alcohol meet at this place and then sometimes they're actually not there and they don't show up or they um don't reply back to messages quickly and i'm left outside waiting for like 10 minutes and sometimes it's raining or cold or really windy partly it's you know my fault as well because i didn't ask for it up front um like the money up front um but you know their excuse would be, oh, I'll pay for it later on by bank transfers or something like that. And, you know, I shouldn't have trusted them to do that. But there's been a couple of situations where that's happened. Um, and that is, that destroys me. I'm like, I can't, I cry and I get so sad. and Because it's like, you know, they're taking advantage of me. I've met all different kinds of people and unfortunately sometimes I might come across one client and that's enough to, um, yeah, that's enough to be pretty crap and <laughs> give me a lot of stress and anxiety about that, but it comes with the job sometimes, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, it's the people, it's the kind of people that I meet, it's more riskier for me. There's a variety of clients, I would say. There's a mixture of clients that I meet on a daily basis. Sometimes they're British, sometimes they're black, sometimes they're Asian, sometimes they're Turkish. Um, but usually they're roughly around 30s or in their 20s. Um, also, I think that I have power over them and I can... like. If a bad situation happens, I feel like I can take control over that and sort of get them out of here and protect myself. But I've always been brave to like, brave enough and never scared um, of the situation. I've always um, been in control um, of my surroundings and of who I meet, like if I get someone on the phone and they sound a bit strange or they, um, they're messaging me and it's not, it's a bit off, then I definitely won't invite them over for a meeting. Um, I get a lot of messages throughout the day, like throughout the morning. So um, I'll spend like a few hours on those and getting back to people and calling and organizing um, meetings and um, and then if a client comes, then, um, then we chat and then we do what we need to do. <laughs> I mean, yes, it's, I've been stressed out. Um, this job definitely <laughs> causes me a lot of stress sometimes, but as long as I meditate and I look after myself, I drink lots of water, I eat well. Um, can I also say one thing that like smoking weed is that like should I can I say it <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> I enjoy it <laughs> um, I think there's nothing wrong with enjoying those things every now and again occasionally I feel upset sometimes when guys refuse my service because of what this guy wrote. Because at the end of the day, he is, he's only one person. There's like so many other people that I've seen and there's no other reviews of me on there. And people judge him and his review, just like just one person they're judging. They're not judging the whole situation. They don't know what's going on. They don't know me as a human being. So like, yeah. It makes me sort of a bit upset by that, yeah.
I, growing up as a, a teenager, I was super repressed in my family. So very, very strict, uh, strict upbringing, um, very religious and, and had no options. Um, when I moved away from my family and started to experience other new things in my life and sexual experiences and everything, I also changed as well. I don't think I changed because of those experiences, but obviously they would have had some impact on, um, on everything, but it didn't change me as a human being. I think I just became more spiritual as time went on. My current lifestyle is definitely not gonna remain the same. Um, it will change in a couple of years, hopefully. I don't want to be doing this job forever. <laughs> a bad day would be not getting a lot of clients, not getting a lot of calls. That would be one bad day, I guess. Um, and I've had those days, don't get me wrong. Like, yes, I sit in my apartment and I'm like alone and I don't have friends sometimes over, but that's part of life, I think. And um there's moments where you know I've gotten a bit upset by that but I will just call a friend if I need to or see a friend if I need to um yeah all my friends know about what I do for a living and they don't judge me they don't um question me they're encouraging me to um they encourage me just to be who I am I love my actual family back home and I do miss them and everything but I can't be who I am around them um I'm I'm me around my friends like I'm absolutely me and like and coming from my culture I'm uh yes I'm born and raised in Australia but I come from a Lebanese household and they're quite religious and very strict and like no sex before marriage and um like no drugs, that kind of thing. And when I moved away, I started to see like a different side to it and, you know, became more open about it. And I do want my own family. I do um, want to raise up kids um, and just slow down and change my lifestyle. I don't tell my family anything. I can't, like, they don't know anything about my job. And I just tell them that I'm a nanny or that I'm working in a bar at the moment, obviously. I'm just telling them that I'm a nanny and that's it. But if they were to ever find out, they would absolutely kill me <laughs> and like want me to come back and like, they would actually come here and drag me back to Australia. That's how crazy they are.